All right, with all of my patch notes uh, explored and done for Dragon Ball Fighters, I wanted to kind of summarize my feelings on this patch from uh, Bandai Namco, my hopes for the future, and uh, what I'm expecting and going forward for the Dragon Ball Fighters meta as well. There are things that I like in this patch. I think there are some really cool and good changes that add options to characters. I think Krillin's after image change is pretty cool so that you actually just have to guess on that one. It makes sense because it's in line with some other characters where it's like, hey, if I can spend half a bar, then I just I just mix you. I I, I get to do that. Cell does something similar to that, um, like in, in the corner. Both of them just do the same thing in the corner now, which is like level three knockdown, spend half a bar, bada bing, bada boom. I think the 18 change is pretty cool. I think that the... Uh, People hate on the full screen Kamehameha comboing to Super Dash changes, but I think it's sort of a natural evolution to the whole, we got rushdown moves that go full screen that we can combo off of, right? Um, it's like there are characters that don't have that tool, but now they have an equivalent to that tool. So they want to play full screen and zone, then they're able to threaten it without needing to have meter or bar. And I think it's sort of neat. I do hate the impact that does have though on combo routing, where everybody kind of gets homogenized, where all of a sudden Cell and Super Saiyan Goku and like Cooler, they're just fitting in as many Kamehameha beams as they can in a combo route. And all of a sudden, a lot of things start to look the same and it's homogenized and you kind of lose a bit of the character identity to it. So that is something that is a, a side effect of that change. So I would have to say that if I could get rid of that homogenized combo routing, and if that means that you get rid of all the Kamehameha comboing into Super Dash stuff, like, that's pretty much, I'd take it. I would do that. I would probably take that change immediately back and say, nope, I want to have character diversity and routing and things like that. This patch is basically the quadrupling down of what Bandai Namco has been doing with the game recently, where they've been making everything bigger, bigger, and more bombastic, which... I don't necessarily agree with as a design philosophy. It's Dragon Ball. These are characters that have incredible scales of power. I mean, we constantly have talks on Twitter about, oh, but can this can X anime character beat Goku, right? And like, oh, we can destroy the planet by flicking a finger at it. It makes sense for these powerful characters within this universe to have this crazy shit that just works at full screen. Fighters, I think, I get why people are upset with some of the full screen shenanigans and bullshit. And I do think that some moves have too many properties to them. There is an issue with the properties on those moves. And it's either like they need to be brought down in line or other moves need to be brought up in front with them. An example of this is like Super Saiyan 4, Gogeta's uh, Lariat. It's projectile and vulnerable. It's pretty much instant at full screen. Um, he just needs to dash forward and it will reach you there. And he gets like a 4.K combo off of it mirrorlessly, and that didn't change. Bardock's EX Lariat, on the other hand, he's, he it's still power crept. Why can't his EX Lariat let him combo for free, like the other EX moves? Why is Bardock not getting that style of love as the other characters? It's an intentional weakness that makes him worse, and he doesn't have anything to compensate off of it. It's not like he can true string 50-50 like Gogeta Blue used to be able to do, like using his uh, Riot, his, his uh, Rebellion Spear medium version. There's land recovery on that stuff. Like, there's just these things that exist for these characters that they simply haven't had those issues fixed. Instead, you get pointless, meaningless buffs being thrown at them. Why does Beerus have no recovery on his level three if it whiffs? That's such a bizarre fucking thing to do. Like, who, what change is that for? It's absolutely bizarre. It's just like, well, why do that change at all? Like, that's just crazy. Why do that change at all? There, there, there's some of those questions where it's just like, there, there's a, again, there's things that I like, and I mentioned a a few of them there. And I think that they, they've done a good job in some areas of trying to bring up some things. But it really feels like Bandai Namco struck lightning, caught it in a bottle with Gogeta Blue. They buffed his combo routes, they improved his frame data, all of a sudden he was a mix-up god, he was a meter building, combo building god, and the system uh, change uh, mechanics as well were an incredible, incredible benefit to him as well. And since then, they've been trying to make everybody like Gogeta Blue. They've been trying to get them all, the, the Kame routes, the super dash into beam things. Ironically enough, he's the one character who has a beam, a horizontal beam in the game that's like a Kamehameha, that he can't combo into Super Dash with. Very cute that they left him out um, on that one. 
because you know they're they recognize that everybody's tired of seeing that character. The one thing I feel like this patch almost feels like a placeholder patch of let's finish up a few ideas that we had, like with the Kamehameha beams. Um, and then let's just let's just put Vegito, Lab Coat, and Gogeta Blue in timeout. Like, let's make it so that that team builds no meter. Like, it's such a boring way of nerfing that team. That's going to be effective. We're going to be happy with that change because we're not going to see all those characters paired up together. And they're certainly not going to be able to fill in every role and position on the team at all. Gogeta Blue is going to disappear from the meta um, because, like, his whole point was being a battery up front. And now he can't do that. Like, every other point character in the game is better than him because they give you more resources. And resources in Dragon Ball Fighters with meter is very important. It lets you burn meter and go into level threes. It lets you kill characters faster. It lets you scramble better by having EX moves that you can throw out willy-nilly. It lets you um, have defensive options like guard cancel or guard cancel vanish, which are expensive. Now it's just like, you, you can't afford to play that character anymore, which I think is a real shame. It, it feels shitty that the way they went about nerfing those teams was to just make it so you can't play those characters together anymore. Rather than targeting some of the strengths of those characters and toning them down, like their damage, for example, um, maybe like a, a slap on the wrist in terms of their meter build in some parts, right? Um, I think a 75% nerf across the board for meter build was probably fine. It, it arguably would have been fine uh, for them, but... The, the 50%, I mean, yeah, it, you, you can't really get those away. And Labco 21, I think they did a good job of nerfing her, actually. Nerfing the bullshit part of her spin so that, yeah, they're still great moves, but if you block them, she's in trouble because you can just say, get off of me, which I think that's a fucking brilliant change. I, I wish I thought of that one. I wish I thought of that one. So I don't think we're going to, and because again, that applies to her assist as well. She doesn't, her assist isn't the de facto best lockdown in the game. It's not even a lockdown assist anymore. It's a good scramble assist that is able to deal with key blast shit. Um, I, I think that was a really good nerf to her. Like the individual character changes they made in some cases, I think were fucking great. I think some of them are fucking just crazy. And it's just like, all right, this isn't this. All right. This, this, this does, this encourages a certain play style that myself and I think others don't really want to see in Dragon Ball fighters, but Again, it's in tone with things like that. They saw that, hey, characters got strong if we gave them these huge normals, so let's give more characters huge normals, right? And you either hate it or you deal with it. Again, I think it sort of makes sense for Dragon Ball Fighters to be like this because, again, these are these are supernatural and mega power characters that can destroy planets. Of course, they're flying around. They're trying to match the scope and the scale of that fight, I think, with these changes. And I can appreciate that vision, that direction. I think the execution leaves a lot to be desired and that they're just ignoring weaknesses that characters have instead of giving them back, updating other characters to be viable. Like to me, what I hope for is that we return, we look at the standard of what some of the fusion characters had, some of those teams had, and we give characters the ability to do that shit too. It wasn't just the frame data and the damage stuff that made Gogeta Blue really work. It was the mix along with that one. Let Bardock, 50, like, True String 50-50 again. Let that be his identity again. Let GT Goku have that back. Maybe you cap that so that they need to spend half a bar for those things, right? So that at least you have to build some kind of meter to then force your opponent into a situation. There's a lot of system mechanic stuff that have changed over the years that have drastically altered how the game is played. And I feel like Bandai Namco went overboard on nerfing a few of those things. And doesn't recognize that they could give some characters those tools back. And that it would make the game pretty damn awesome again. Or at least more awesome for a lot of people. I still love Dragon Ball Fighters. I'm excited to mess around with this patch. I think we're going to see a lot of team diversity in this patch. Because now it's going to be like... Without these like vacuuming meta characters defining the top tier. That like, why play Yamcha for his ASIS when you have lab coat? Like that question doesn't exist anymore. Now it's like you can play GT or Yamcha or Gotenks and use their assists for your lockdown shenanigans. I think that's a that's a pretty exciting space to be in. And the fact that we do get a follow-up patch as well, I think, is going to be something that hopefully we can take full advantage of. The one thing I would say is Bandai Namco, stop fucking paying attention to those goddamn idiots who make those stupid ultimate fucking patches and think that's what we want. That is Mouth Breather's opinion of what they want from Dragon Ball Fighters. Listen to some of the good players of this fucking video game next time, please. 
that's my one salt post on this one. I'm excited to explore the patch with everybody else. And y'all, let's just maybe not try and design crazy things to make Bandai Namco think we want crazy things. I'm looking forward to Tyron and Damascus making an effort to trying to give uh, feedback to Bandai Namco and coming up with ways and forms. And rest assured, I will fill that out 110 ways. I will fill that out 110 ways. So I think that um, the new patch, though, is going to liven up the game. We're going to get a shakeup for sure. And uh, we'll see how it goes from there. Catch y'all at Combo Breaker.